And then came last night's bomb in Macrafelt. 60% of businesses in Macrafelt have been damaged by this bomb. 500 pounds of explosives packed inside a van were left outside the offices of Ulster Bus in Broad Street last night. The police say the warning given was totally inadequate. The bomb exploded 20 minutes later. They say it's a miracle no one was seriously hurt. It's the worst attack Macrafelt has seen in many years. Businesses were already facing hard times. We've lost somewhere in the region of a thousand jobs in this area this year. And we were just trying to get ourselves gathered together after that. And now this comes. Like, it has knocked the heart out of people. But having said that, I have no doubt that tomorrow the, the, the main stream of Macrafelt will be up and running. This is a terrible disaster for Macrafelt because Macrafelt over the past 20 years has developed into one of the best business towns in North Ireland. And uh, the tremendous relations between Protestants and Catholics in this town. And I mean, the both sides are completely hurt and very annoyed because of this bomb. The Ulster bus offices, now a pile of rubble, was one of the oldest buildings in the town. Another, the Ulster Bank, may have to be demolished. Dozens of houses were damaged. A window in the Church of Ireland rectory blew in, covering the three-year-old daughter of the local minister. You know, a child of three years is often on top of the duvet as underneath it, and uh, fortunately at that time last night, uh, she was tucked up uh, at the top end of the bed. Had she been in the middle and to the bottom, she would have been literally underneath the, the frame and the glass. And we dread to think the consequences that could have followed from that. And the Church of Ireland private had a message for the terrorists. You're not going to change us. You're not going to move us. You're not going to destroy us. We have got our lives to live, our businesses to run, and we're going to go on doing it. And you're wasting your time. You will cause untold misery and destruction, but you're not going to change the people of both traditions in Northern Ireland who want an end to this. The home of this 84-year-old woman has been badly damaged by the bomb explosion, but she's lived here for 50 years, and she says she's not leaving. I'm very determined to stay here. Never made. all my children were born in this house. The people of Macrafelt are already fighting back. Some businesses were open today. Many others say they'll be back in business in a couple of days. And last night, the IRA hit a third time in its renewed campaign. This time, it was Macrafelt. Tonight, as the people weigh up the human cost of the weekend, it's the government which will be weighing up the financial cost of the latest outrages. Secretary of State Sir Patrick Mayhew has visited the bomb-ravaged centre of Macrafelt and told the IRA that they wouldn't win. An estimated £5 million worth of damage was caused by last night's blast in the town, the fourth huge explosion in the province in as many days. From a helicopter, Secretary of State Sir Patrick Mayhew gets a bird's eye view of what's left of the centre of Macrafelt, where it's estimated that three out of every four shops have been damaged. Back on the street, Sir Patrick picks his way through the debris and the rubble of Broad Street, where it's thought half of the buildings will have to be demolished. They won't, however, have to do that with the Ulster bus depot. that's already been flattened by the 300-pound van bomb, abandoned right outside the front door. Three banks have also suffered extensive damage. Away from business life, the bomb has also caused human misery too, especially among elderly people whose homes have been devastated. I, I'm right, but what I don't know. Okay. I, have it. I don't know. It's no, I it's it's been six years on it. The whole back said, I said, all out, all out. From the old to the young and the three year old daughter of Church of Ireland Minister, the Reverend Terry Scott, had a narrow escape as her bed was shard with glass. The window came in round her and the frame and the glass on top of the duvet, but thank God she was quite safe. There are nights we go up to tuck her in and she's lying on top of the duvet, as little children will do. But last night, thankfully, she was at the top of the bed, under the duvet. It's one of many miracles we've seen in Matra, Pelt and Portadine and so on. And all I can say is, in God's name, will someone, someone has got to bring a stop to this, because we can't go on. The blast came only days after Sinn Féin celebrated successes in the elections in Maharafelt. All hell breaks loose after that. They increased their vote here. Uh, I doubt if it would happen now, because I think people, when they see this sort of thing happen, you know, would realise what, uh, just what exactly they were voting for. Traders in Maharafelt had been expecting an attack and ironically had been discussing ways of thwarting it. 
we did dread this happening in Mackerfeld. You know, as a matter of fact, we were talking, we were just talking last night and we were thinking that maybe we'd have to do something, maybe talk to the police or something about more security because we, we were afraid. A lot of people were afraid. Mr. Tilhill was one of the businessmen visited by the Secretary of State this morning. Sir Patrick said the IRA knew they couldn't win and he dismissed criticisms of the government's security policy, but he sidestepped the question of loyalist demands for the introduction of internment. Internment remains a power available on the statute book. It has been used in the past both in the north and in the south, and it is necessary that we should retain it for use if it is advisable. A clearer message from Maharafelt came from the traders who vowed they would be back in business. Yeah, I have six shops here, uh, properties, and uh, a lot of it has been damaged. But again, we're working very hard at the moment, and we should have it, well, keep the business in a couple of days' time. They clear up after the fourth IRA bomb in as many days. The heart of another town blasted away. Police say their officers only just managed to get people clear because of inadequate warnings. This is what the IRA calls an economic target. It's been said before and it will be said again. The people will pick up the pieces and get on with it. But here in the rubble of another IRA bomb, it's who will pick up the bill in compensation which is becoming more of a political issue. The insurance loss adjusters may be here, but they'll hand on the final bill to the taxpayer. These are the compensation estimates covering only four days. Up to £10 million for the blast beside Belfast's Europa Hotel last Thursday. £8 million after Saturday's bomb in Portadown. Then on Sunday, a car bomb at another Belfast hotel, £2.5 million. And last night's explosion in Mahra Felt set at £5 million. At least £25.5 million total cost. The Northern Ireland Secretary was under pressure today with unionist calls for a get-tough approach on security. The response should come from a cool head, a hard head, and that there should be an, a really considered response. They must uh, prescribe uh, the uh, Sinn Féin and uh, bring out the security forces against the IRA. I feel sad because it's so pointless, totally pointless. This, this town here is just getting nicely into shape and there then sent the rubble. Had to start all over again. The Northern Ireland Secretary insists there is no need for a change in security policy, although he's facing a barrage of criticism. He also has serious difficulties in trying to restart inter-party talks here. Andrew Simmons, News at 10, Marrow Felt.